hey, look, another big, chunky, definitely for kids sound bumblebee thing. I don't know why I'm so enamored with these things all of a sudden, but here we are. And today, it's all about Power Charge Bumblebee. This is the big gimmick toy that came out for the Bumblebee movie, Bumblebee. And uh, recently got this for actually pretty decent price uh, used. Had some stuff that I had to address on it. Has other stuff I might still need to address, but for the most part in pretty good shape. Uh, not missing any bits. And unfortunately, I do have a streak on the windshield. I tried to clean it off, but I didn't want to go too nuts with the cleaning because I didn't want to like take off the actual paint on the windshield. But yeah, I've got that going on. Uh, the bumper doesn't like to hold together all the way. It just doesn't like there's just gaps in the bumper. Uh, the side mirror is bent, which is, I don't care. And the rear bumper also doesn't hold together entirely, but uh, it's fine. Like, I don't mind. But yeah, this is Power Charge Bumblebee, and this is a big, this is a big car. <laughs> this is a very big car. Like, Rise of the Beast, Beast Mode Bumblebee is big, and it's actually significantly smaller than power charge bumblebee like we'll we'll come back to this for the proper size comparisons but like there's the studio series 86 version this car mode is gigantic so yeah um there's a big beetle it's not a whole lot i could say about it it's yellow all the way around except for the gray for the bumper the gray and black for the wheels i believe the wheels are black and the gray is I can't quite tell if these are separate pieces, but uh, point is, color separation on the wheels. Tail lights painted in red, gray for the rear bumper, and the tailpipes that are part of the same thing. And then for the windows, you've got this kind of really dark metallic blue for all the windows, which they painted all the way around, which does, like, I appreciate that. Um, but that's it for the paint on this guy. Very simple deco for car mode. There's a little bit more going on in robot mode. Kind of. <laughs> we'll get there. But yeah, um, it's kind of, I don't know, it's satisfying when you transform this thing right and everything is like tabbed together. It's like really solid. And it's just this big, bulky, sturdy feeling car that's just kind of fun to hold, I guess. Um, also, I'm now noticing there's a little bit of gunk there that I'm going to need to try and clean off later. But yeah, uh, it's a cool car. Rolling is not great. Like, it does roll. But the problem is there's this wheel down here that you're supposed to basically push down as you roll so that it activates the sounds. And it does activate the sounds. There we go. But of course, it's not going to come across on the microphone. So I'm just going to place the uh, or edit in the sounds for the vehicle mode right now. So yeah, the sounds are, they are what they are. I don't mind them, but that's not why I got this figure. Uh, the thing that does bum me out a little bit though is because of that thing down here, you can't really adequately roll the car around like an actual car. It's not a huge deal for me, but it's a little bit like, you know, it doesn't quite balance because of that. And it's just, eh. uh, But that's kind of all I can say about the car mode, I think. Uh, well, also, I guess, gotta mention the headlights in blue 
translucent blue, but it's separated, which is preferable. And that's nice. Uh, but I definitely have things to say about what they did with the headlights and stuff when we get to robot mode. Uh, but yeah, this is a very big car, as I said, because we bring in our usual size comparisons. Like, seriously, this thing is enormous. <laughs> it's it's absolutely gigantic, and like I kind of I kind of knew it would be, but it's still almost cartoonishly big. Um, since we brought this in before, here is Beast Mode Bumblebee, who is himself a pretty darn big figure, and this is even bigger. And here is Studio Series 86 Bumblebee, and what the heck will bring in G1 Bumblebee as well. So yeah, there's all of that together. And since we're looking at big sound toys, let's bring in Power Flip Optimus Prime. And like Power Flip Optimus Prime is also pretty big, but he is, in vehicle mode at least, really tiny compared to this B. And finally, of course, we got to do the most significant uh, and important size comparison of them all, and that is the duct tank. Okay, transformation time. And uh, this is oddly... A bit more nuanced than I was expecting. I mean, granted, I, I'm i sure I watched videos on this thing before, but it's been a while and I must have forgotten. But yeah, there is a lot going on with this guy's transformation. So to start, I'm going to peel the top off of this thing. So let's just kind of pull up here on these sides to get this up and then just kind of keep pulling and it'll disconnect the entire top of the vehicle. Now, I'm going to reach in here and hold these flaps back just a bit so that we can get a finger in here and pop the toes up. Those actually peg into part of what becomes the robot back, or what is the robot back. And with the toes disconnected, now we can disconnect this entire back section. It tabs in kind of right up here and right over here. And then I just like to rotate it back a bit because that helps to kind of get a little bit more clearance. So now that that's all done, I'm going to untab the doors here. There's these big chunky tabs in here. So I'm going to untab that and untab that. And uh, I should have taken care of the arms, but we're going to do that now. Okay, <laughs> should have done this first, but untab the arms. They just tab into these big chunky tabs right here. And then these can swing out and straighten out. There's this big piece, uh, this big hole here that pegs over that big chunky tab. So pop that up. There we go. Okay, it actually clicks. That's good. We'll get to that. Anyway, pop that up, swing that out, bring that out, and there we go. And now we're going to do the upper body first, just because the legs are much more involved. So you want to keep the doors kind of like this. You don't want to try and flare them out. But keep them kind of out like this, and then rotate this forward. And this little... Uh, there's this little squared off bit right here that will go into this notch here. So bring this down, and that will kind of click into place. It doesn't hold it like super duper securely, but it holds it enough. Like this can get bumped out of the way, but it locks. Like it's not gonna flop out with, you know, regularly messing with the figure. And you can also take the bumper and rotate that down. It doesn't really tuck in any further. You could kind of force it because this is soft plastic, but I don't really think you wanna fold it in that much. So I just fold it in until it rests against the uh, upper body. So that done, now this panel can go off to the side. And then on this side, same deal. Hold it down, keep this door relatively straight, because otherwise, the uh, like if you see where this pivots, this actually sticks in when you rotate it, so this will get in the way of the rotation if you do that. But bring this down until that clicks in, rotate this down and just have it sit there. And that is most of the upper body done. Now we'll do the legs. I'm going to straighten out the hips. You do want to bend them forward a bit for the uh, vehicle mode. And also here you can see 
be tabs on the butt that the feet tab into. But bring the legs out, they're more straight. And then split the back. Zoom out a bit, here we go. Split the back. Split the back. Pigs in really solidly. <laughs> split it, there we go. Okay, so split the back. And that allows the legs to come out. Now the legs are, as I said, a bit more involved. So you want to kind of bring this hinge in and also rotate this back section out like this. So that'll give you the clearance you need for the feet. So what you want to do with the feet is fold this out and also get that out of the way. You want to kind of rotate this forward, bring the foot down. So you kind of want to bring this down, rotate this, and keep bringing this down and keep rotating this until you have tire all the way down about where the ankle is. Now this panel will double hinge up and into the calf, and this will fold around and this will tab into this spot right here behind the knee. And that will peg in. Now that that's pegged in, this assembly can rotate back so that this just kind of this is kind of rests. It doesn't lock in, but that's fine. It doesn't need to. So that'll rest like that. You can bring the foot down, rotate it up, and the wheel will sit into that cavity very nicely. And this panel comes up and there is a tab here that'll go into uh, there's a this narrow spot on like the brown piece of plastic here so the tab in there and this silver tab will slide in here so bring this up and this will kind of peg and snap in to lock the leg together and that is one leg not too bad just you know kind of involved so now on this one same deal, going to kind of rotate, like bring this up, rotate this out. I'm going to rotate the foot out, bring this out, and then start spinning it. Bring this all the way down, collapse this up into the leg, then fold this around and peg it in to the side of the knee. Rotate this down, bring the foot down, rotate this up, and there's the semicircular spot where the wheel sits. So bring this up, bring this up, and tab this into front shin. And there we go. Legs are done. Now to finish this guy up, going to we're going to do the now we're going to do this first, and then the wings. So this comes down, and you just kind of fold it back, and then this panel folds in, and these little bits here will go over these or go around these tabs back here. These doors out of the way, like that. And this just comes down and sits against the back, and these little uh, or these big chunky bits here will go into these. Yeah, <laughs> these divots back here and that will it doesn't lock but it'll keep this in place and when it comes down it does the transformation noise and it also does the transformation noise going back so that sits there it doesn't like lock in but the way the hinges are arranged it's actually pretty solid like it's not flopping down and it'll be more solid when the wings are transformed so now, I want to take this back window section and untab it here. It just tabs in very securely right up here with this little hook tab. Untab this, bring this down, and this will tab in over this piece here. And then take this and fold it around, and this will tab over here. And that gives you one wing, other wing, same deal. Untab this, which is very, very secure. <laughs> but untab this, bring it down and tab that in, fold that in. And there we go. That is, as I said, a bit more complicated than you might expect. It's definitely more complicated than I was expecting initially. But here we have Power Charge Bumblebee 
in robot mode, and he is big. I'm uh, I'm a little bit mixed on how I feel about this robot mode. I think he's fine. Um, I'm not super into the proportions, primarily the chest. I just feel like it would have been nice if this could come in, but it, it doesn't. It just... Okay, thank you. It doesn't... Uh, it doesn't pinch in more. I really wish it did, but uh, nope. Instead, it just kind of... It, it just kind of flares out weird and gives him like a really, really broad chest, which doesn't really look right, I don't think. But, oh well. Um, but, you know, it does read as the Bumblebee movie Bumblebee. He's got the almost tennis shoe looking feet. The front of the car, like wheel wells and lights for a chest. The molding on the torso is a little bit wrong. He doesn't have, like, you'd think they could have put the tape deck the radio into his stomach, but maybe, the, I mean, he's got the wings, so maybe this is based on the concept art, not like the finished product. I don't know. But yeah, it's, uh, for what it is, it's fine. Just the proportions are a little weird. I don't mind the wings. I know they're wrong, but it doesn't really bother me. Um, it's just the broadness of the chest more than anything. I just wish that this could somehow tuck in just a little bit, you know? But then you wouldn't be able to access the giant wheel in his chest. <laughs> um, so here also is where I've got some issues with this guy in terms of the paint. Because there's not a lot. It's I'm assuming it's budgetary because they made this giant lights and sounds bumblebee that has a fair bit of moving parts for the transformation and even for the engineering, like for the articulation. So like they probably didn't have as much of a paint budget, I'm going to assume, but I feel like this guy definitely needs more. The separation is there. At least I appreciate that. Like they did, they did paint the toes. They painted the silver on the shins. They painted the yellow on the thighs, the yellow on this forearm. And uh, I think yeah, the uh, the kind of metallic-y brown right here, I think, on the biceps, that's actually painted. I think. It doesn't look like it's two separate parts. So yeah, that's, that's painted. And of course the face, but I don't really count the faces because those are always a given with the paint. But yeah, the face is done in silver. Little side bits are done in silver and the little top plates are done in silver. So, like, they did paint this guy. I just feel like he could have used maybe a little bit more, but, like, I don't really know what else could have been painted because, like, I feel like this does hit most of the keynotes. I think it's more than anything. I think what bugs me about this guy is the mixture of gray slash silver and this brown. I don't understand the brown. Maybe it's just a materials thing, but I feel like if this gray was used for the rest of it like if this and this and the centerpiece were like you know the actual center mass of the body beneath the yellow bits were this same silvery gray i think it would look better but maybe i'll paint it in the future i don't know <laughs> um but just for what he is i think he's enjoyable he is hollow in a few places you can see the sides of the knees there and the uh insides of the arms like forearms particularly around back uh it's not too bad but the backs of the fists are hollow but like all things considered this guy actually comes together pretty cleanly doesn't really have anything in terms of extraneous kibble like yes i know this is kibble but like it tucks away against the back really nicely it doesn't get in the way that much he doesn't have waist articulation so it doesn't get in the way of that <laughs> so yeah it's just the broadness of the chest and the brown. Those are my big things with this guy. Now, the head... <clears throat> pardon. The head is typical Bumblebee, and I've never been that big a fan of this. The sculpt is nice. The painting is good. I just don't like the design. As I've said many times, it looks like he's got a pacifier in his mouth, or for a mouth. But you can address that 
Um, I am noticing, though, it's actually molded. I can feel the texture. There is a teeny little Autobot badge on his forehead. That, well, maybe it's not teeny, but it's uh, small compared to him. Maybe not the smallest Autobot badge, but it's it's pretty small. But yeah, that's kind of cool that it's textured. Um, but yeah, you actually have the uh, the face mask gimmick, where if you grab the little bits on the side of his head and pull them forward, the face mask springs out, and that's a cool gimmick. I like that a lot. And the face mask is just uh, it's blue, translucent blue, blue plastic they painted yellow, and actually the head is also painted yellow. I think this is. At least they painted it all the way around to the back, but I think this is actually, uh, I think this is gray plastic, just looking at the neck there. So yeah, I guess they put a lot of paint on the face, but I like the battle mask gimmick. I think it's cool. It is a little awkward looking on this figure because one, it sticks forward a fair bit. Like if we have him looking straight forward, you can see it kind of sticks out just a bit. But the other problem is, if you turn the head, it only turns about this far before the chin of the battle mask hits the bit around it and causes the battle mask to shift up. And it's like, I feel like if you're looking at it from the front and even from the side, it's not immediately noticeable that the battle mask shifts like that. But when you're looking at it from the side, you can definitely see how it, like, it shifts up. And I, it's not a lot, it's not the biggest problem, but I feel like maybe they could have not put as much of a sculpt, like, right around there so that it, you know, <laughs> didn't have that issue, but whatever. Okay, now, uh, to put this back, you just fold it back like that and it locks into place but uh <clears throat> yeah for articulation the articulation on this guy is uh it's reasonable but also pretty basic the head is on a swivel so it does rotate but it can only go around this far it cannot rotate any further because there's actually they like molded in a catch it's like this triangular piece right there that the chin hits so you can't rotate the head past that point, and I don't really understand why. I feel like I feel like they could have allowed it to rotate 180 degrees to kind of hide the face in robot mode, but maybe they didn't want you to because it's accurate to the movie to have his face sticking forward. I don't know. But yeah, you get swivel at the head. The arms are, uh, they swivel around, and they go out that far. There is also the transformation hinge, which goes in. It only goes out that far, but it goes in. And uh, this is the thing that kind of bums me out about the design of this guy, too. I wish there was something that locked these bits in place. There's there's nothing there. It's just void. You can tuck them in if you want to do that, but then the shoulders sit much lower and you can't really rotate the arms. So like they're supposed to sit out like that, but there's nothing locking them in place. There's not even anything locking them up in place up here. So, like, I just wish there was something. And I feel like this could have been remedied if this slid in, because then these would be butting up against the armor, like, the structure underneath these yellow pieces, and then they wouldn't be able to fold down like that, but what do I know? I'm sure there's a reason for it, but yeah, it's just a little bit of a bummer. This arm in particular, because it's a lot looser, so this, if I try to bend the arm down, immediately wants to go down like that, and I just don't don't like that. It's not the worst thing, but it is annoying. You get bicep rotation. You also get uh, just under 90 degrees of elbow bend. No wrist articulation, but you do get his little flip-out blade on this arm. You just... Uh, push the little switch, we unclick it, clicked it into place, and now it doesn't want to unclick. There we go. Okay, so this just slides forward, and should, I think, yeah, that locks into place as well, so you can give him his arm blade, which is pretty cool. Uh, I think it would have been also cool if they gave it, you know, if they had it on both arms, but eh. Uh, there is, whoop, 
Yeah, see, there you go. That's <laughs> if the swivel's too tight, then it disconnects this. That it connects, it doesn't come out super easily, but like it's not too hard. Like this one's fine, but this one's so snug it pulls that up. So, yeah, that, that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, no waist swivel. The legs can go forward quite a bit. Uh, can only go back that far before they hit the backpack. You can probably, like, fold stuff out of the way, but I, I don't want to because you have to, like, untransform the wings in order to get this to move back, and then that gives you more room. But it's, like, it's for backwards hip articulation. I don't really think you'd need to go back further than this anyway. Hips can go out to just about 90. You get thigh rotation just above the knee, or I guess knee rotation at the bottom of the thigh, however you want to look at it. The knee does bend, and it bends 90 degrees, and it also bends a pretty reasonable amount going the other way if you want it to. And that's it. You do not get any ankle tilt um, because of how this all transforms. This has to plug together, but if you unplug it, if you wanted to, you could use this for like outward ankle articulation, but you don't get any inward uh, ankle articulation. So, yeah, it's just no ankle articulation. It's just an A stance, which I think is fine, especially for a toy like this that's way more, you know, kid focused. And that's pretty much all this guy does. The only other thing is he has his sounds, which, once again, you get by rotating the wheel in his chest. The thing that bums me out about the sounds, other than the fact that I just don't think the sounds are all that interesting, is the fact that uh, it makes his chest light up. But, like, that's... That's horribly lined up. <laughs> and if we get this out of the way, I am actually going to detransform this a little bit. If we rotate this out of the way a bit, and then do this again... You can see there's the LED in the chest there. They could have, like, I can't really think of a reason for this to not be lined up with the chest lights. Because, well, actually, no, I can't. I was going to say, like, they could have brought it in further, but if they brought it in further, it'd be an even bigger problem. But, like, once again, we come back to what I was saying about how if the chest could compact in just a little bit. Because, I mean, even if these just slid in, like, to the line here, if you see where the lights are, that would practically put the lights dead center in the actual headlights in the chest. It would narrow the chest a bit. It would give this arm something to brace against. So, like, it really... I don't know if it was something that was planned that they just never did? Or what? But, like, seriously, all they would have to do is have the chest slide in and like the lights would line up, the arm would be much more secure, and the chest would not look as awkward. It's it's weird. And it just kind of irritates me how you've got the lights in the chest there and they just don't line up with the actual lights. It's, maybe even just bring the lights in slightly. It may not be as accurate, but like I, I feel like that would have been okay if it was in service of... Like, it's not that big of a difference, and I think it would have been okay if it was able to get the lights to line up properly. So yeah, I don't know. I, I feel like all I'm doing is complaining. 
I do think this guy's neat. I think that gimmick's fun to pull off, but like he definitely could have been handled better. There are just some aspects to his design that feel not entirely thought out. I'm fine with the articulation. The transformation is interesting. And again, I'm surprised at how compl uh, complicated, not bad, but complex the, the legs are. And it actually tucks up the car, like it tucks the car in there surprisingly well, all things considered. But I just, the, the brown plastic and the proportions and the and the sounds not being great and stuff. It's just so many things. It's like, why did they do it that way? I don't understand. But I'm not a Hasbro designer, so I don't know. All I can guess is it has to do with the you know concept stuff. Anyway, I'm going to stop going over all the same stuff. And let's just start doing our size comparisons. So yeah, this guy is freaking enormous, like I said. There's Dinobots and Over Prime and Burnout and Samus. And he is massive. Like this might be as big, if not slightly bigger, than like old school leader size. I don't know. I don't have any old school leaders to do comparisons with anymore, but I feel like that's about what he's at. He's big. I'll bring in Beast Mode Bumblebee. And again, Beast Mode Bumblebee is a big Bumblebee, but he is not as big as as uh, Power Charge B. He is a he is a very big fellow. <laughs> though I think, you know, even though the articulation on him is better, I do think that uh, for what he is, Beast Mode Bumblebee is a bit more fun to play with. Maybe that's sacrilege. I don't know, but I like this dude. I said it before, and I am going to continue to say it. I like this dude. And let's uh, get him all situated, get his wings back. And I still, I'm so, I really think it's funny that I never knew you could do that, but I love that you can. Uh, but anyway, yeah, here he is in beast mode. Beast mode. And uh, he doesn't gain any height, but now he has wings. <laughs> they, they finally gave Bumblebee the wings. Yeah. All right. So there is that. I'll bring in Studio Series 86 Bumblebee and whoop, he compacted G1 Bumblebee. So here he is with these two fellows. I am looking forward to the day I get Missing Link Bumblebee. I really want that thing. <laughs> yeah, again, absolutely enormous figure. Uh, G1B has fallen again. I need to tighten up those joints, I think. And since we looked at him before, here he is with Power Flip Optimus Prime. So we've got Power Charge Bumblebee and Power Flip Optimus. And then of course, well, this is the Orion Pax mode. So here he is as Orion Pax. But once again, if you haven't seen the video on this figure, this figure is a ton of fun. I highly recommend it, um, but we're gonna turn him into Optimus Prime. And I still just, I absolutely adore that. That's so cool. And here he is with, you know, as Optimus. And then for one more thing, we'll do the power armor thing. So we'll extend his legs and flip the armor around. And here he is all armored up. And so with his legs extended and the armor on, Power Flip Prime is taller, but way lankier. <laughs> This bee is big and a beefcake. He is a... He's big beefcake. Beefcake. Those bees... I don't know. I've been doing this for a long time tonight. It's, it's a long recording session. Anyway, for our last bit of size comparison, here he is with the duck tank. Now, this bee is, in my mind, not as good as Beast Mode Bumblebee. It's not as fun as Power Flip Optimus Prime. He is not what I would call the strongest gimmicky, overtly toy Bumblebee figure that I've encountered. Um, which is fine. He's not bad. It's just there are certain things that I wish were a little different. And I feel like they could have done. Um, but this is, for what it is, 
still enjoyable. The vehicle mode is great. Transformation is really interesting in how the legs work. Everything else is kind of what you'd expect. Like, the leg transformation is pretty cool. He does look neat for what he is, just inaccurate. And I, again, think that if this and the biceps were gray, the colors would work way better. Um, but love the mask gimmick. I like that he has a little flip out knife, even though it'd be cool if he had another arm. And all things considered, this is still a pretty cool B. I'm glad I got him for like around, around about 30 bucks before shipping, which is a great price for this, I feel. And uh, yeah, pretty cool figure for what he is, just not the best that I've encountered in this vague category. Though he does unquestionably have better articulation than the other two big noisy toys we looked at as comparisons. But yeah, uh, another thing I want to talk about, I forgot to mention this when I was uh, doing this before, so I will do it now. I'm going to do all this, undo all this rather, and bring this up because he actually has an off switch. If you don't want him to do the sounds and the lights and all that, there's this little switch right here on one side. You can see it's asymmetrical. There's nothing here. Switch right here on his butt. Flip that down. And with that flipped down, now the wheel does not activate lights and sounds. And that is how I'm going to keep him because I don't really need the lights and sounds. I just more wanted the big Bumblebee to transform. But like, I like that there's a switch. I like that this gives you options. Power Flip Optimus Prime. I will again maintain, I, I really, really like Power Flip Optimus Prime. I just wish it had an on-off switch because I cannot mess with the figure without it making noise. And that's irritating. And I don't want to take the batteries out. I want to have the option to use the lights and sounds but you just don't get it. Uh, I don't mind it as much on Rise of the Beasts B because his stuff is tied to specifically a button and the transformation, or not transformation, but the beast mode gimmick. So like you really have to want it in order to get the lights and sounds on that guy. So that doesn't bother me nearly as much, but like, yeah, I love that he has an off switch. Anyway, I'm just all over the place. But yeah, for what he is, as I said, pretty decent figure, I think. If I ever get around to it, it'd be worth trying to paint him up a little bit. But it's a pretty fun big B to mess with. I, I, that's kind of all I was looking for, so I got what I wanted out of this guy. But that is enough about what I think. What do you all think of this thing? <laughs> Whatever your thoughts, feel free to chime in down below. I always enjoy hearing from you all. I think I forgot to mention it before we did the transformation, but... Uh, yeah, if you want to support channel, I've got a Patreon, coffee, links to both at the end of the video as well as down in the description. Typical YouTube pandering stuff. Also, like, comment, share, subscribe, and if you don't want to use money, that's also cool. But with all that out of the way, thank you again for watching, and I will see you all in whatever the next video ends up being.